Learn how to use basic colored pencils to create a zoomed in succulent drawing that jumps off your page. You can use the same technique to do a zoomed in version of your favorite plant. A rose, a marigold, the options are endless. I created this drawing using only six, six colors for my Crayola pack of 12. Georgia O'Keeffe is an American artist who is very famous for her oil paintings of zoomed in flowers. I have to say, I never appreciated Georgia O'Keeffe until I visited her museum in Santa Fe, New Mexico. She is so talented and keep in mind that her first gallery show was in 1916. She gained major popularity in the 1940s, so think about what it meant to be a woman artist in the United States at that time. So to make the impact that she did, she truly broke down some barriers. I also love that she was a public school art teacher and she taught at Columbia College in my hometown of Columbia, South Carolina. Start with a pencil at the center of your plant. The center is a little tricky because the leaves are blooming and so they're atypical, but once you spread out to your second layer, it gets a little more simple. I envision each leaf as a heart shape, but you can't see the top of the heart where there's two like round edges that go together. You're just looking at the point and every leaf that you add is gonna be catty corner to the one that you just did. So you kind of put it where the two meet, you put one in the center of that. Although the shape of the leaf stays the same, every section as you go out, you want it to get a little bit bigger. Once you're happy with your drawing, it's time to start shading. I'm gonna start with just my darkest color green and I'm gonna be shading every single leaf. In the point, you're gonna press down and that's gonna be your darkest value, but I'm not pressing down as hard as I can. I wanna stay with my dark but not darkest value into my middle ranges and into my lights. I'm gonna be going back and adding a lot of darkness once I'm happy with my shading. When shading an object, you want to follow the curve or shape of the object to make it look three-dimensional. So I'm not shading in a straight line, I'm following the organic curve of each and every single leaf so that it gives the illusion of form or three dimensions. I'm trying to shade as smooth as I can, but I'm not being too picky because I know I'm gonna be overlapping more color on top of this. So as long as I shade pretty smooth, I can always go back and fix it. You don't wanna make more work for yourself though, so try to keep it smooth with every layer of color that you add. Okay, that took a long time just to do one leaf, so buckle down, put on your favorite podcast, movie, or music, because this step takes the longest. I'm listening to Bill Nye's Science Rules. It's a podcast about science and it's super entertaining. So if you're looking for something to listen to, that is my newest favorite podcast that's not true crime. Here's a closer look of what that looks like. Pressing down where the two leaves overlap will be where your darkest value is, and every leaf, leaf is gonna have a slightly different shape. Shading out and try to mimic the shape of the leaf that you've created, and I'm leaving a white outline around my pencil line to make um, each leaf have like a highlight on the very end. This is gonna make your plant look so three-dimensional that it could literally jump off your page. things up. Keep in mind most of your labor and work is going to be done in this step. 
You are shading each individual leaf, which can be overwhelming, but once you're done with that, you're gonna be blending color to the foundation of shading that you're creating. And keep in mind, this doesn't have to be done all at the same time. Take a break, work on it another day, because this is the most time consuming part. really happy with how this looks because I set a solid foundation of shading. You could do this same technique with a simple pencil or a charcoal and leave color out of it altogether. I love working with color and my next step is to create more depth in my shading. Since this is a cool green, I'm using blue, not the violet, but the blue colored pencils to amp up my darkest areas. Notice when I blend over it, it's still green, but the blue just enhances the shadow and the darkness of my green. A succulent plant is very cool, and so this blue is perfect for creating more depth in my shadows. I want this plant to be full of life and have depth, so the very center of my succulent where the plant leaves are blooming, that's where I'm gonna put the most pressure and apply the darkest values. I want that to be the focal point of this drawing and have um, a little bit more range of value. So I'm gonna try and press on hardest there. I'm gonna be using this blue, however, at the darkest point of all of my leaves. Um, but I'm gonna just press down and use more of it in the center. So you're gonna go back to each leaf and press down and overlap with your second color. Here's a closer look, and remember, you've already set the foundation for your shading. You're just overlapping and blending a second color. So press down the way you did before, and don't cover the green up, but enhance it with a cool blue shadow. This is your second most time-consuming step, so I'm gonna speed things up again. It's now time to add your unexpected color. So far, I've only used blue and green, which are very similar, same color family. I'm adding red for two reasons. One, red is the complement or complementary color to green. So it's a great way to overlap and create depth to create a really interesting shadowed area without using black. Secondly, a lot of succulents, including the one I had, although I did kill it, has some pink to the edge of its um, leaves. So there's two reasons why I chose red. One, to create that nice pink effect, and the other because it's the complement of green, which means it's the most opposite and will create the most contrast and the most interest. I'm gonna use red the most in the center because I want that to be my focal point. It's the darkest part of the plant and I also want it to be the most eye-catching. From here on out, I'm gonna use the red to create that like violet, really dynamic shadow, but also to give just the edge of each leaf a little bit of pink. Now let's speed things up a bit. So 
I've paid attention to shadow and I've paid attention to complementary colors. And now I wanna use a warm yellow to make my leaf look even more 3D. So with color, warm colors pop forward, whereas cool colors recede. And so cool colors are great for shadows and warm colors are great for making surfaces look closer, which is gonna give my leaf a really nice rounded three-dimensional pop. Because of all of the attention to shading, this step goes really quick because the foundation is there. I'm just adding the hint of that yellow. And so I'm not spending as much time on this step. Using many different colors, unity is also important. So unity is the harmony or togetherness of your work of art. I'm gonna revisit a green because I've added a lot of color here. I have red, I have blue, I have yellow, and this plant is green. I don't wanna lose that. So I'm taking a second more warm green and I'm just overlapping to give everything a very um, harmonious, a unified feel. And I will go back with my first green because that's the dominant color. And so when you look at this, you're gonna see a lot of green. And I'm gonna go back to that first color to create my final harmony within my color scheme. Knowing when an artwork is finished is always tricky. I always take a step back and ask myself what needs to be enhanced and what do I need to leave alone? And as I keep repeating, I want the center of my succulent plant to be the darkest area and the area that's most emphasized because not only is it darker, it has the leaves that are a slightly different shape. So I'm returning to my darkest green and my darkest blue to create that shadow that I keep talking about that's gonna be so important to my composition. few touch-ups and the smoothness of my shading and I think this is about to be finished. As soon as I thought I was done, I spied the white colored pencil and I realized, oh yeah, I want to do a little bit more blending on the inside of my plant. So the white isn't going to make a white line like it would if it were, you know, a paintbrush, but I want to give like a waxy blended finish and I do it to a few leaves, but not to all of them. Maybe I was just over it but it definitely gives it that unified, blended, waxy look of a succulent leaf. You notice I left the top left-hand corner white, and I'm on the fence as to whether I like that or not. Part of me wants to go back and fill it in green, and part of me likes the contrast of an unfinished corner. So here is the finished product. I use only six colors for my Crayola pack. If you have like expensive Prismacolors or a hundred pack of colored pencils, go for it. But this can be done with the cheapest, most basic pack of colored pencils that you can pick up at the dollar store or really anywhere. More art tutorials, please subscribe to support my channel. I upload almost weekly unless it's spring break and I upload more. And check out my website, thatartteacher.com for full lesson plans, student examples, and years worth of teaching ideas.